Hello, everyone. This is Access Chat, and this, my name is Deborah Rue, and I'm joined by my fellow co-host, Antonio Santos, and Neil Milliken is still manually moving his entire home. <laughs> Poor thing. There's no boxes. Or no, so he is completely, he's a mover this week. Poor thing. So uh, do you want to say something, Antonio? No, all right, cool. Well, so our guest today is Mark Bullock. Mark has been part of our community for a long time. He pops in all the time on the chats. He also is married to a very, very talented woman, and um, she is a Paralympic medal winner, uh, Samantha Bullock. And so we are just going to, I'm a fan of her, so we always, we talked about her last week too, Mark. So we always find a way to bring Samantha into the show, and we're going to um, she's going to be on the show in the future as well. So Mark, welcome to the program today. Tell, tell the guests that might not know about your work, about you, about your history, how you got into um, sports and adaptive sports and, you know, what we can learn from you during these really times of crisis when we know we need to be exercising for our mental health, but what do we do when everything's closed down and changed? Yeah, well, th thanks very much to everyone, Antonio, and thanks to be the thanks for the opportunity to be a guest once again on Access Chat. Um, I think it's a fantastic platform, and particularly at this time, it uh, gives us a great opportunity to share some ideas and thoughts around physical activity and exercise and what that means right now. Um, my, my background is I got involved in disability sport, inclusive sport, back in the early 90s when I shared an office with a, well, he's still one of my best friends, um, sports development officer for people with a disability who is um, visually impaired himself. So I had an accelerated learning curve by sharing an office with him and doing some tennis related projects. Uh, got really interested in the area and then uh, started coaching. My, my background is tennis, so I started coaching tennis, um, particularly wheelchair tennis, uh, worked with a couple of players. Uh, one in particular, Giant Mystery, who went on to be Britain's number one, top eight in the world. Um, as a result of working with him, I was the national wheelchair tennis coach in Great Britain for a few years. Um, and then uh, did a few other things. Disability sport was always part of it. And then I joined the International Tennis Federation in 2001 as the wheelchair tennis development officer. Um, and now um, and did that for a few years and then took over as wheelchair tennis manager. Uh, and. Uh, about three years ago, I left the International Tennis Federation and set up my own business all around promoting disability and inclusive sport. Most of that is tennis, uh, but not exclusively. So I've branched out into other things um, and certainly working across a range of impairment types um, and particularly interested in looking at physical activity for, for people with profound and multiple learning disabilities. Um, and I'm doing a lot of work around uh, Especially. So that's a, a bit of a nutshell um, yeah. of what I'm doing. And it, I think it's such an important thing. I know I, I am a big exerciser myself and it's, it's been, uh, but I go to the gym. I, I actually like being in a room full of people and dancing Zumba and stuff because I get energy from the other people. And of course, Zumba can be very, very accessible as well. It's a lot of dance. It, but now all of a sudden, like everybody else, my life has changed. And so you're trying to figure it out. And I've been going on YouTube and doing, because I've been do. I have a, um, a zero runner eight. And um, I kept using it wrong and hurting myself. And so finally, during this crisis, I actually went and asked him what I was doing wrong. And definitely doing something wrong and fixed it but I've been out on YouTube looking at videos and I, I noticed I went out there um, yesterday and there was this really really fit man and he was doing a squat that at the gym they've always told me is very dangerous to do it the way he's saying to do it but he's saying you're gonna get much better results and I thought or I'm gonna blow my knee out so as we're trying to figure all this out, you know, at a time of crisis, and we wanted, we know exercise is good for our brains. We don't. Where, where do we even go, Mark? Where do we even begin? How, how do we know who to trust? Yeah, I think that's a really, good, really good question. And, and I myself, I'm not a qualified. And so personally, I've been very careful to 
when I've shared content and I've done Zumba classes with, with my wife, uh, we make it very clear that we're not instructors, but this is what we do at home. Um, but we do engage with instructors. So the other day we did a Zumba class with a friend of Sam's who's in Brazil. So we have a social connection, but we're remote. But the class is good fun because we're interacting with someone that Sam knows uh, and knows us, but she's a qualified instructor. So I, I think my advice would be to look for people that are qualified, but also appropriate to, to where you are. I mean, this gentleman that you're talking about, that might be a safe way to exercise if you are a highly toned athlete. Yeah. But it might not be if you're not. So it's, it's finding activity that, that's relevant. Um, and I've done a lot of work look, looking at what's available on uh, online for disabled people, people with disability. And you, you've got, in many ways, you've got the extreme. You, you've got what Paralympians are doing. And then you've got very basic exercises for people who are inactive. And there seems to be a bit of a gap in the middle. Which, which we need to explore and, and fill. Um, and my advice to be people would, if it hurts, don't do it. Um, if you're unsure, don't do it, but move in a way that's comfortable for you. Um, and uh, that's why I think dance is such a great thing because people move within their own limitations. Put your favorite music on and, and move. Um, and you're unlikely, don't use weights, use your own body weight. Um, and then you're likely to be safe. And I, I think there's something else that people need to be aware of is, is that you know, some people are staying at home and some of them are realized that, uh, that they need to do exercise, but uh, because they, they're, that's something that they usually don't do, they need to be, have some extra careful not yep. to jump into some type of physical activities that might harm them. So doing something you know, at a more slow pace, very slow exercises for a couple of, of weeks to make sure that the, the knees, the muscles get used to that movement is something that they should consider before suddenly jumping into an exercise that can be very intensive. So I think people need to be very careful with that as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think the in increase in moderation, so you, you, you don't look at something on YouTube and go, I can do that straight away, you, you, you build up to it. If you've not exercised before, don't do a 50 minute class, do the first 10 minutes and stop. Yeah? Or do it in chunks through the day. So you, you don't do the whole 50 minute class in one go, you, you, you spread it through your day. And I think that's good practice anyway, to rather than do one big chunk of exercise every day, is spread your exercise through the day, provide some routine, provide you something to look forward to, um, and, and keep, keep you moving. And I think generally it's better for all of us, even those of us who are very fit, it's better to, to do lots of exercise through the day rather than one big chunk here and there. Um, I, you know, we talk about mental health exercise is brilliant for providing some routine um, and, and breaking up the day. Um, so it's not just the physical benefits, it's those, those mental benefits and, and using stuff that, that's at home. You know, we, we, we've heard of people buying rowing machines, buying expensive pieces of a kit. That's perhaps not, if you've never exercised before, you probably don't need a rowing machine. You can probably step up and down your, your steps if you've got them. Um, you, you can do a lot of work using your own body weight. Um, so yeah, I think it's really interesting times, uh, but uh, there is some material missing, I think, um, for people with a disability. Um, there's, there's not a lot of stuff that's audio described. So I've had a lot of requests from the visually impaired community to try and find stuff that's audio described. Um, and, we, and, uh, we recommend um, my clear text that uh, Elaine McCarthy is here behind the scenes, but that's such a good point, Mark, because everything has to be accessible to all of us. And so it, that, that's just such a very important part. And we, we, often we don't see that. And when you're listening to the instructor, like you said, you know, somebody that's qualified to tell us these things, 
I, you need to do more than just watch them as they're explaining certain things. You need to understand what they're saying, which is why the captioning is so critical to make sure we don't hurt ourselves. So yeah, I think that's a very good point. And I think one of the opportunities for me that's coming out of, of, of the situation that we're in is being able to connect with a lot of instructors and coaches and point out to them how important it is to be inclusive and, and work, work out ways of explaining better um, what they're about to do um, and encourage them to put descriptions on their videos. So, and a lot of them won't get it right, and it won't be perfect, but I think we're, okay. we can take people on a journey of, of being more inclusive. And I had a, a Zoom call this week with, with the, uh, the group that I normally teach blind tennis to on a Wednesday night. They're, they're, what's, they're a B1 group, so they're no functional vision. And we came together on Zoom. And that was interesting because there was no physical activity, no tennis, but the group reconnected. Right. Um, right. But they were asking for more and more info. And you mentioned the word boredom earlier. Mm -hmm. There is some audio described lessons that, or stuff that's available. But, but if we're in this situation for several weeks, we, we need variety. Or months, or which months, is yeah. what we're being told. We're being told um, the governor of Virginia has said that we're shut down until at least June 10th. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it's hard to think about it. But I know that you were mentioning earlier about um, exercise equipment. And I, trying to keep my daughter, Sarah, who was born with Down syndrome, healthy, healthier, because she... She's gained so much weight, you know, and um, we bought her a treadmill a few years ago and she was really good about using the treadmill, but she, her form was weird and she actually started hurting her knees. And I talked to my brother-in-law, who's a doctor and he is a doctor of physical therapy, sports medicine. And he said, don't let her use a treadmill. He said, most of the injuries I see coming in to my office are from treadmills, especially when people take a treadmill and they put it on the hill thing. Because he said, what we find is people are not using these treadmills in a way that's natural. Whenever you're outside running or walking, it's almost like your body has to adjust in a way so that you you know, yep. hold yourself correctly. But on these machines, you can really, really hurt yourself. So it, there's you know, it, taking the time, like you said, to, well, you, you know, stretching and getting ready for it and just doing a little bit at a time. But I, I um, have a question as people really struggle around the world, all of a sudden, a lot of people are home working that maybe weren't working before. And we just had an yep. example of Antonio's lovely daughter, you know, photo bombed, which we always love when she photo bombs yeah. us. But People are working from home with their children and they're also caregiving, you know, their parents and older people. Is there a way? And yeah. let me do that because you, you, usually when I'm at home, I'm working uh, during my working hours, but now you have ex extra roles. Right. On the top yeah. of that. So right. You could be the caregiver. You could be, you know, the father, the, the teacher, you know, the, and they're all in one place while right. you are working. So right. we don't forget the dogs and the cats yeah. and the yeah. <laughs> iguanas, yeah. whatever you have. Yeah, right. and I think that, that's really people. That, I've worked from home for for three years now, but I, I've n I've not been at home every day. So that I'm also adjusting a little bit because um, I'm not out doing any face to face delivery. Um, and, and I think it, it's building some some uh, routines and some boundaries. So that uh, if, if you can, if you've got children, if they know that if you're working in a separate office and the door's shut, they, they know that's uh, a boundary. But also, I think the great opportunity of this situation is if families are together, they're having to exercise together and do things together. And that, I think that's really good. That's a real positive coming out of this is that instead of one child going off to do one activity, another child going off to do another activity and the parents being split. We're having to rediscover how we do things together as a family. And I think physical activity as part of that is built into the day. You know, it's not yeah. be less selfish. We're going to do this physical activity together. 
Right. And I think that's a real opportunity for us. And I know what's going to happen. You know, we've been telling people for years and years and years to, you know, telework is a, should be an option. It is certainly, I know, according to the United States government, um, with our, our government agencies, it is considered, um, telework is considered an accommodation. And so, it, and, you know, the Americans with Disabilities Act, you know, you can you can find that language in there too, but telework is an accommodation. And so when, as we all weather this crisis together, you know, we're stronger together, but I think a lot of people effort, it's over, everybody's lives are going to be changed. I hope positively, and I know there's going to be loss sadly, but um, I think what can we learn from this time about, and you're right, Mark, you know, I remember when my kids were small and, and Sarah had, you know, bowling and Kevin had this, and I was running around here and there and, but they were different activities. I yep. think, you know, now we can come together and say, could we, you know, what can we learn from this? How can we be together? How can we teach our children why, you know, um, exercise is so important? And, and once again, at a time when it is so such a frightening time, I don't know anybody that's not frightened. And, you know, we're all trying to keep a good attitude. And my sister made a comment yesterday, it feels like aliens attacked because there's an invisible thing that might get you, you know, and people are really, really struggling with their mental health. And, thinking they can't do anything when you actually could because exercise could keep you know helps with those endorphins and stuff but how do you how do you say and i agree breaking it up during the day is a good idea and i've actually heard that i don't know if it's true but i've read many times <clears throat> in different articles that if you work out for an hour but you break it down into chunks during the day or you do it all at once you have the same results it might even be better for your body to break it down so i've heard that before and i've actually done that a little bit but how do you how do we help people not only you know take the time to exercise for themselves but how do they do it with their family and, you know, and with, you know, people they might be supporting as caregivers, maybe their older parents, especially when we're not supposed to be leaving the house or we leave the house, but we're not supposed to be out in public areas and things like that. What kind of tips would you give them for that? Yeah, I think, I mean, there's, there's lots of, lots of ideas going around on online. Um, there's less targeted at perhaps the, at our community, people with a disability. Um, and there's, there's certainly less around people with profound and multiple learning disabilities. So that's an area that really interests me, but it's doing stuff together, playing games together, dancing together, doing exercise classes together, um, playing, if you've got enough space, playing floor tennis, um, pushing a ball backwards and forwards to each other. Some of it's the physical activity, and then a big part of it is, is, is bringing people together. Um, and for me, it's about, you know, our physical and mental health are not two separate things that, you know, the brain is a physical organ. We, we need to think of them together. And yes, we're trying to get physically active, but also um, mentally active and also providing as much engagement as we can possibly get at the moment because we can't do it in traditional ways. So we can do it with the group that we're isolated with. So that's important. And then we use the technology that we're using now to interact externally and find creative ways of doing exercise classes or challenges. Uh, so I, I don't know if, if people have seen my Twitter feed, but I've, I've done some visually impaired tennis challenges, which seem to, they're very simple, not rocket science at all, but they seem to have been really well received. Now, they're not really around physical activity because they're skills based. Your heart rate's not going to go up very high, if at all. But it's a skill and it's providing some engagement. Right. And right. the second one I did, I did very badly. And that's created a bit of engagement. You know, So I said, well, I didn't do a very good demo there, but can you beat my score of three? Yeah? <laughs> um, so I think it, with... And I think the challenge is, and I was talking about this earlier with someone else, is how we get all this content into a central place so that people can know where to go to look for it. Right. Um, there's lots of stuff being shared, lots of really good stuff. Um, not as much as inclusive stuff as I would like, but there, there are people in share, sharing inclusive content. 
and I'm jumping in trying to encourage people to make the content they are sharing inclusive. So if I see someone share an idea on how to play with balloons, I'm saying, you know, stick some rice in the balloons and you make it audible and you engage another sense. Right. So for the vision. Which is good for everyone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's just trying to encourage everyone to engage in ways that, that are inclusive. And a lot of the ideas are not going to come from, from me. We want to create an environment where people try things out and then share with us what's worked and, and what hasn't worked. Um, and don't be afraid of trying something that doesn't quite work. Um, right. And, and I, we have to stop assuming that people with disabilities, especially people with physical disabilities, can't exercise because it's ridiculous. And we need to exercise. And you mentioned the brain. My, my husband has dementia. It's 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 pretty profound now and um so you got that mental health stuff but what i noticed was when we were going to the gym he was going to the gym three times a week and swimming and his cognitive ability was so much stronger he hasn't been able to go swim for the last we've we've been in since march 9th i haven't been out of the house since march 9th i've been going outside and exercising but and so um, with, the cri with the stress of the crisis and not being able to exercise, I re he has declined pretty rapidly. Now I'm hoping it's just temporary and I'm getting him outside and it's warming up here and we're blessed to live on this little tiny river where we can do stand up paddling and stuff like that. But, it's, um, but at the same time, I'm not as confident that I can get him into the river safely, blah, blah, blah. But the, yeah. people are having to deal with stuff like that. So I think having a place where we can go, having these important conversations, knowing that everybody can exercise. It just depends on who you are and what you need to do and how to do it. And you make sure that you look at, you know, families like yours, Mark, that are doing it and you'd have the right coaches, but it's, it, there's a lot of intensity going on around Never. all of this. I, yes. I point to highlight that, you know, people need to accept that you are not going to train with the same level. Uh, you don't need to train with the same level of intensity, Good point. but you need to find a way that you are able to keep yourself in shape. And when you are able to leave, uh, you are ready to exercise like you were doing before. So it's, you don't have to, to go to the same level of intensity. Uh, you're just okay. trying to find a way where you, you keep your body in the rhythm of exercise and you don't lose that attraction. Right. Then right. when you are able to get out, you are ready to exercise as usual. And another important element, like Mark was saying, is, is coming together, having small meetings with people, with your team, with the people that sometimes exercise with you, because that's the element of mental health that is also part of, of this whole exercise, exercising yeah. your mind and, and connecting with the people who are not your family members, but they are your buddies, the people that often exercise with you. So that's yeah. also an important part of all. Because I spend, I spend every single week with mainly these ladies and some men too, but I'm seeing some of my Zoom instructors now are doing Zumba classes on Zoom. On Zoom. And so I think we're getting more and more creative and I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm doing it with YouTube, but I'm looking forward to do it with the instructors. I know that we're out of time. So I want to do a couple of things. I want to thank our amazing supporters like my clear text. We are so grateful that they support us, making sure this is fully accessible as Mark pointed out, please make the content, but if it's not accessible, you're leaving large amounts of people out. Um, but Microlink is amazing and Barclays Access, we love so much and we're so thankful that they support us. But what I wanna do is I wanna turn the mic for the last time over to Mark so that Mark can give us some um, closing words, but he can also tell us how to find out more about him. Of course, you know, he's at, at Mark Bullock, M-A-R-C-K, B-U-L-L-O-C-K. Uh, and I totally did those those letters wrong, but <laughs> so he's Mark Bullock. But he, Mark, tell us also how do you find you on other mediums and your website too? Yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter um, as Mark, and it's three underscores Bullock. Uh, the same on Instagram, um, uh, and I'm quite active on LinkedIn. Um, and then um, yeah, my my website at the moment. Um, not so active, but there are some ideas on there. It's a Wix website. Um, and 
Uh, so just look out for what we're doing. Um, passionate about, particularly at this time, encouraging disabled people and their families to be as active as possible. Uh, I don't have all the answers. We're, we're in unprecedented times for all of us. Um, so it, it's really trying out ideas, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. Um, and as Deborah says, making sure the content is, is as inclusive as possible. Um, and this is a huge opportunity to take instructors that are delivering content online to encourage them to go on a journey of making their content more inclusive and thinking about how when we get out the other side of this their content can be more inclusive um, and there is some really good practice out there there are gaps uh, and and make people more aware of of what physical activity can look like well for disabled people but for the whole population i think mm -hmm. after this has ha all gone through we're going to realize that we don't necessarily need to go to the gym to exercise we can do stuff at home and we can do to get things together as family units or groups of friends we don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money and split families to, to go to different activities uh, i think there'll be some what we're doing and what we're trying to do and i think i learn most of my stuff from the from the people that i do my activity with i'll set up an environment and then watch someone try and do something and then go okay that's an interesting idea i'll take that forward um so i don't claim to know everything uh, about this area at all and across the whole range of impairments um but just want to engage in a conversation that allows us to get disabled people as active as possible i agree and i th i think you're right mark i think we have the opportunity to create really better habits now more inclusive habits and um and be healthier moving forward so thank you thank you antonio mm -hmm. um and elaine and good luck neil neil's getting his exercise by um lifting pianos <laughs> so um we look forward to taking this discussion to access chat on tuesday and we appreciate your leadership Mark, so thank you so much for being on the program today. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.